Nice Good to have you here. Welcome to Mason Morning Live. Have a seat. And um, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We've heard a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit more about what's, what's happening in the, in the advanced uh, detection and cancer research. Well, um, I'm uh, Dr. Latif. I'm a radiation oncologist, and uh, I treat cancer with radiation. And um, I'm very uh, happy to partner with the Mountain Vista uh, Medical Center. And uh, they have the advanced technologies of uh, digital mammography, uh, this being uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So they are doing a great job of uh, providing free screening every week, digital mammography. And uh, so we, as we talked earlier, American Cancer Society lady, that the aim is to get cure and diagnosis at early stage so that we can get 100% cure rate. So the early detection is the key. If we can detect the cancers early, we can cure them 100%. And in the same vein, this di digital mammography, this is very, very accurate. It has very few side effects, very minimal uh, radiation delivered to the normal people, which they don't need. And the results are excellent. So basically, I'm very, very uh, happy that uh, Mountain Vista is providing that. That's great. Stacy. tell us a little bit about, uh, about the center. Well, we are a fairly new center. We're only about eight years old. We do pretty much everything. We are a heart center and a stroke center. Um, we have a full imaging department. Of course, we do the mammography um, every Tuesdays for free in the month of October. Um, we are doing the uh, breast cancer walk this weekend. Um, Where's that going to be? The breast cancer walk yes. is downtown. Okay. It's the Susan Coleman G okay. walk. Great. Mm -hmm. And where's the uh, where's the center located? Where are you guys? We are on uh, Chrisman, right off the 60, north of the 60. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, doctor, you said that the key to to any cancer I know is is early detection. Um, can you give us an idea, or give those in the audience an idea of how often they should uh, self-examine things like that? True. Um, the usual uh, recommendation for, uh, like we are specifically talking about the breast cancer, is uh, after age 45 um, every two years and after age 55 every year. But the patients who have genetic predisposition, the cancer does run in families. So the people who have uh, those BRCA genes which are, you know, predisposed to cancer, breast cancer, so they should have uh, screening early, starting at age 20, and uh, as a baseline. And after that, every three years, and if two to three times consecutively they are, uh, the screening is negative, then we uh, go to five years and so forth. But basically, every five years um, uh, for up to 45, and then every year, and then we continue that way. But that's, that's actually a, uh, an exam in the, in the clinic, right? But, yes. But you, True. Yeah. And uh, so self-examination, um, that is also a good, very, very good and effective way. Uh, yesterday I gave a talk on um, skin cancer and uh, living in Arizona, you know, we are uh, exposed to a lot of sun and a um, lot of skin cancer. And again, uh, skin cancer like is not a lethal cancer, but it can cause a lot of problems. Um, you know, ultimately, if left alone, can cause death as well. Similarly, prostate cancer, um, simple test, blood test, and uh, it's called PSA. If it's done every year, we know that uh, 70,000 people can be saved from death. So as far as uh, breast self-examination is concerned, it's a simple, simple procedure. Ladies um, can examine in the bathroom, sitting in front of uh, a, a simple mirror, and both sides just see and look for anything which is abnormal, which was not there before last time, and uh, anything uh, 
suspicious, which is feels, looks, or anything, uh, any discharge. So anything which is abnormal, which was not there, uh, should be noted and should be brought to uh, physicians and tested further. So basically, this is what we need to do for anything, anything which was not there before and which is persisting, you know, do it. Uh, bring it to a physician. That's great. Well, I just got a, a note here. Mountain Vista has self-exam cards on the back table that can help. So stop by and, uh, and guys, take one home to uh, the important women in your life, to all the women in your life, because this is, uh, this is something that, like you said, it used to be something that was, uh, it's still scary, but boy, you've made a lot of advancements. Talk a little bit about where you've come from and where you see this going as far as treatment. Uh, the treatment-wise, you know, uh, again, the first step in any cancer is uh, detection. So screening is the best part, you know, we can get it before it's apparent, then it has the best cure rate. But, you know, we cannot find it because of there are internal structures and we can't see them, we can't feel them. So we have to have annual uh, physical examination, blood test, as I said earlier, uh, for lung cancer. Now CT scans are recommended by FDA and uh, approved by Medicare. So we do all those tests and then when we find the cancer, the first step is to do the biopsy. We have to have it sample of the tissue that whether it's cancerous or non-cancerous. So we, we diagnose first and once it's diagnosed, then the very first step is mostly surgery. We have to have it taken out and uh, and then, based on what the surgery shows, like again, you know, this is being breast cancer, we have a long history of breast cancer. 50 years ago, breast cancer was treated. We didn't know how to treat it, so we had what we call radical mastectomy. And what it entailed is, they will take out the whole breast and all these lymph glands in one big chunk, all this. And this was a horrendous oper operation, but it was good for those times. The problem was, when they remove all those lymph glands and all that, this arm will swell up, it will become this big, it will become red, it will become painful, and then, uh, they, the ladies have to live with that for the rest of the life. And the problem was because of that swelling and that accumulation of lymph over here, um, they would develop in few years another lethal cancer uh, called lymphangiosarcoma. And that will kill, if breast cancer has not killed, that will kill within, within, within years. And so it was, it was terrible. But later, you know, we refined the techniques we, from radical to, we went to modified radical where we'll take out the breast and the lymph gland. And then for last 30 years, we are doing what we call lumpectomy. And what lumpectomy is basically we take out, we, we have diagnosed with mammography that there is a cancer here. So surgeons will just take out the cancer with some normal tissue around it and leave the breast intact. It's important. We are preserving the breast because breast tissue, breast itself is important for psychological reasons, cosmetic reasons. And then, of course, surgery has its own side effects, which I mentioned earlier for uh, if we do the radical mastectomy. So the breast is intact. And then after that, we give radiation therapy to, to the remainder of the breast. And then if those lymph nodes we sample, we don't take out all the lymph glands, but we sample the lymph glands. And the, the best news is if those lymph glands are not involved, meaning the cancer was limited to here. So if the breast cancer is limited here, the ladies don't need chemotherapy. And chemotherapy is a very, very strong treatment. It has a lot of side effects. You lose hair, you lose weight, nausea, vomiting. It's, it's a mess. So the lymph glands are negative. You don't need chemotherapy. But then after the lumpectomy, if we don't do anything, the chances of tumor coming back in the same breast is about 42%. But if we give radiation, which I specialize, to the same breast, the probability drops down to less than 5%. So basically, we did a lot of studies on thousands of people. First, they were done here in the United States, and then it was replicated in Europe and all over the world. And now we know for a fact that if we just 
preserve the breast, save the breast, and just do, take out the cancer, and then give radiation to the breast, we have exactly the same survival, less side effects, and the quality of life is good, and we preserve the breast, and uh, we say a lot of side effects, a lot of problems. So basically, our technology is getting there where we preserve all the organs in the body. We try to preserve them because there is no replacement for normal tissues, normal organs. And uh, same goes for anything. You know, urinary bladder, they would take out. And how do you live without a urinary bladder? Now we are preserving urinary bladder. And I can go on and on and on. So preserve the normal tissues, take out which is necessary, and then give radiation if necessary, give chemotherapy as if necessary. So basically, the aim is cure the cancer, prevent the side effects, improve the quality of life. And that's what we are trying to do. That makes sense. Here's a question. Are there any other ways to beat cancer other than treating it with radiation therapy? So basically, treatment of radiation, you know, uh, there are primary radiation treatment like prostate cancer. Prostate cancer can be treated with um, surgery, but then treating with surgery has its own problem. The patients who have surgery have what we call radical prostatectomy the chances of urinary incontinence is about 60%, which is, which is very, very high. You know, patients do anything. They, they laugh and they leak urine. They try to grab something, they leak urine. And in extreme cases, they have to wear diapers for the rest of the life. And that's very, very scary. So in those cases, we have been treating prostate cancer with radiation for the last 30 years and the results are same or better. There is no incontinence, and matter of fact, I should mention the rate of impotence with the radical prostatectomy is about 70%, and most men, this is the most important function. They don't want to lose it. So 70% impotence with radical prostatectomy, which we can prevent with radiation, and they preserve their prostate and no side effects. And the side effects with the radiation, mostly they are very, very limited and localized and during course of radiation. And after that, it goes away. So basically, radiation is useful in so many ways in all different organ systems. And we have excellent track records uh, at our cancer center at Arizona Oncology Network. We are based at uh, Broadway and Power Road, close proximity to uh, Mountain Vista Hospital. And you know we are partnered with Mountain Vista Hospital. We have the latest technologies here locally, which, which you can get anywhere in the valley or anywhere. Uh, we provide it here, and we are very, very uh, lucky that uh, we are here. We are providing these services. Myself, I trained at Albert Einstein University in New York. I did my fellowship at Harvard, so I'm not boasting, but I can claim that I have the same, almost same, or better qualification than any, any place, anywhere you will get. That's great. What's on the horizon? Uh, do you see anything that's uh, uh, exciting you, for you as far as, uh, you know, you, you, look at, you look 20 years ago and you think of where we are now, what's, what's to come? Uh, but that's a great question. As I said, the best part is improvement of the technologies. Technologies are getting so, so good, so better, uh, giving the maximum radiation dose to the cancer and protecting the normal tissue. Again, coming to the breast cancer, what we have, what we call brachytherapy. And basically, we give localized radiation therapy. Uh, I gave you the snapshot of growth of radiation from radical mastectomy to mastectomy to lumpectomy followed by radiation. This brachytherapy is a new technique which is used uh, for quite some time now, almost 10 years, and we are offering here at uh, our uh, cancer center as well. So what it does is instead of treating the whole breast, we put a balloon during the surgery. Surgeon takes out the cancer and then we put the balloon and instead of giving uh, like six weeks of 
radiation treatment, we give about eight to 10 treatments at our center. Just uh, we hook that balloon to our brachytherapy machine. And we, of course, we do uh, very sophisticated treatment planning and all what is needed to make it work. And then we attach that. We give about five minutes of radiation to that area, the cavity where the breast was. And then, again, there is minimum radiation given to the breast and to other tissues. And the cure rates are same. So it's a very, very exciting technology that we, and this is beneficial for ladies who are younger, who are working, who cannot afford to go for treatment for six to seven weeks, which is external beam radiation, which I do traditional radiation. It is daily, Monday through Friday, five days a week. So they have to leave their families, they have to leave their job to get the treatment. With this technology, brachytherapy, they can have just eight treatments and less side effects, and no hassle, and same or better results. So I'm very happy that we have those technologies available locally as well. That's great. Stacey, anything you'd like to add before we uh, uh, encourage people to pick up the, the self-exam cards? We have a lot of stuff back there for people to pick up and take home. If you would like to uh, get a free mammogram, call our center, and we can um, get you all set up for a Tuesday. Great. And if uh, after they leave, if they come up with uh, other questions they might have for you, what's the best way to, uh, do you have a website? We do have a website at iasishealthcare.com and then just pick our hospital. Uh, we have a um, website set up there and you can call the center and ask for me if you need to. Well, that's great. Well, we appreciate you being here. Um, I'm sure that everybody in this room has been touched by uh, uh, family or loved ones that have um, that have come down with breast cancer, and boy, it's, it's exciting to see the progress that's being made, and hopefully someday, uh, don't take this the wrong way, hopefully someday there won't be a need for you guys. Definitely. That, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, how about a big round of applause once again, Sharid Latif and Stacy McMillan. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming by. Thanks, you, doctor. Thank you. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you. All righty. Hey, we're going to